an abandoned eight-year-old Taiwanese boy raised by his aunt is making strides despite his behavioral challenges. Tiji volunteers and local neighbors help clean up the fire-damaged four-story house for the survivors. Welcome to Headlines on Laurie Chen. Thank you for joining us. Today we take you into the world of an amazing eight-year-old boy and his aunt. Hong Jajun came into this world kicking and screaming like the majority of healthy babies. However, his parents had divorced and he was soon abandoned. Luckily, his aunt took him under her wings and raised him as if he was their own. What seemed to be just normal childlike behaviors soon had a name attached, autism with hyperactivity. Jajun came to our home when he was only about three months old. At that time, my daughter had just recently passed away, so I was reading the Sutra of Terra Treasure. Every time I was chanting the Sutra, I would tell him, you have to behave, okay? Auntie's going to chant the Sutra, so listen carefully, okay? Then he really was behaving himself. I remember when he called out to me for the very first time. I was very touched. He called me Auntie. Oh. In fact, sometimes I feel quite hopeless. Many times I would just hold him in my arms and cry. One time I took him out somewhere and people were telling me that I shouldn't bring a child and to stay out in public. So I just held him in my arms and left. I was thinking to myself, he's just an energetic child, just totally full of life. He's not poisonous, so why are they so afraid of him? <laughs> It wasn't anything at first. She was only here to buy some car parts. Then one day she brought Jajun with her. So that was how I got to know him. I asked what his name was and he told me my family name is Hong, Jia with a J, and Jin with another J. I weighed 38 kilograms and I'm a kindergartner. I was like, wow, that was amazing. So much detail given for a self-introduction. We assisted her because this child's specific characteristics were just that special. So we wanted to be there for her. Due to this positive affinity, here we are. I can still remember when he first started coming here, I was really frustrated. As soon as he entered the doors, his shoes and socks would all come off. He didn't use his hands to take them off. They would just disappear out of thin air in a matter of seconds. And the chair, he would sit still for about a minute or so before the chair would be flipped upside down and thrown to the side. I'm quite strict with him, very strict, more strict with him than the other children his age. All the city volunteers around me care a lot about Jia Jun. They all love and accept him just the way he is. Not everyone is capable of doing that. Many people aren't able to accept him. Just like what Dharma Master Dian has said, in this world, there's no one I do not love. Plus, they're also understanding. 
So starting from two years ago, we provided him with financial assistance for his studies. Starting from this year, he is officially one of our new show scholarship recipients. Two years ago, it was a monthly assistance with the cram school tuition fees. He is a child that really needs support in this area. He needs the extra attention and tutoring for his studies. So that's why we are very happy to be able to support him in this way. Actually, what I care most about right now is for him to grow up with good values. Like what the master said, one more good person gained, one less bad person created. I would just like my child to grow up safe and sound. Wow. The CG Academy in San Dimas, California was holding a Lunar New Year prayer ceremony. The Academy emphasizes moral education and independence in their curriculum. That's why they invited a family of four to come share their incredible life-saving story with everyone. Let's check out the heroic story. The CG Academy in San Dimas, California recently held a Lunar New Year prayer ceremony. Everyone brought their coin banks and poured their collective compassion and givings into the giant golden pig decoration. It was a fun way to do good deeds for those who are in need. The golden red decorations all over the venue really brought a festive vibe to the event. These were all made possible by the eco-friendly art class teacher and her elder son. And we also designed the six foot tall numbers of 2019. And we spent countless hours in home cutting out the cardboard and then taping it and then covering it with gold paper. And today we got to the, see the result of all our hard work. Suji's so lifestyle education taught both Morgan and his younger brother Benji to always remain calm and alert during emergency situations. Therefore, around half a year ago, this type of calmness came in handy when they successfully saved their mother when she fell into a swimming pool. In my school and Suji so and at home, my parents, um, they, teach, they, they taught me how to call 911. I hope Suji can help me improve my skills and some skills that I would like to learn is like to learn CPR and like to um, like help prepare like like an emergency such as this one. Um, I really like this um, Suji and their organization because not only do my kids learn Chinese, learn how to speak Chinese, but they also and the culture, but they also learn about other stuff that you guys do, all these charitable events and um, how you do good deeds for people around the world. And I think that's very important to have a very kind heart. And I like the school because you guys express that a lot with the kids. Both the children's growth and the parents' approval are further motivations for the school staff and volunteers. They will continue to spread the seeds of great love and pass on Suji's education mission, focusing on humanistic culture concepts. Today, we take you back to that fateful night of the Color Play Asia incident in 2015. Many youth attendees suffered from severe burns and faced long-term rehabilitation. Fortunately, that technology created a pressure garment that's breathable, cooling, and elastic to help ease some of their sufferings. On June 27, 2015, an explosion occurred at the Formosa Fun Coast Water Park in New Taipei City, causing serious casualties and the injuries that would require long-term rehabilitation. In the follow-up rehabilitation of patients with burns, they must wear pressure garments for a long time. There may be many inconveniences in daily life. Master Jing and feels their pain as these burn victims already have a lot to endure, such as the pain of rehabilitation and wearing thick pressure garments. Da'ai Technology actively invested in research and development and constantly tried to improve fabrics by making them breathable, cool, and elastic. When we were developing the eighth generation garment, we finally found a suitable solution, which can apply the pressure at a value of 20 millimeter Hg or higher. Even the air permeability met our requirements. In cooperation with the Sunshine Social Welfare Foundation, Dai Technology donated pressure garment fabric and tailors from this NGO produced this new generation of pressure garments. This is more comfortable to wear. It is not so tight. Concerned about the feelings of burn survivors, continual improvements have been made through trial and error to make new pressure garments with more suitable fabrics. Dye technology pressure garments are relatively cool. Those from the foundation are a little more comfortable, but don't breathe as much. While it is important to be comfortable, one cannot sacrifice the function of these pressure garments. The most important thing is that the injured person won't avoid wearing these garments.
Not only does it provide pressure in this particular area, but it also must be able to move in this direction. It also has to be useful for rehabilitation, and they need to both like it and be willing to wear it. Comfortable and effective pressure garments can help with burn rehabilitation, allowing these patients to make a smoother transition into society. Diet technology has helped many on the long road to recovery. Staying on the topic of garments, nowadays people have developed a bad habit of simply discarding their clothing and going out to buy new ones because it's cheap. However, recycling station in Guantan, Malaysia has collected nearly 15 metric tons of used clothing. They hope to raise the public's awareness on the consequences of fast fashion. These people relay to bring bags of clothes onto a big truck. Recycling volunteers from the Kwantan Recycling Education Station also came to help. <laughs> We have about 20 volunteers coming to the recycling station to move these clothes onto the truck. Then the truck will go to Kuala Lumpur. The truck is from a recycling company in Kuala Lumpur because the second-hand company in Kwantan cannot handle the clothes from our recycling station. Other available spaces in the recycling station are stacked with nearly 15 tons of second-hand clothes. This figure is actually a warning. When I came here, I was surprised by what I saw. When we were going through these clothes, we discovered that some of them are still unworn and completely new, but they have been recycled. It means that our desires have led to waste. Doing recycling can only lower the waste of resources. It won't root out a problem. The cause to this problem is that we must control our lifestyles and consumption behaviors to stop damaging the earth. On February 8th, a four-story building in Taoyuan went up in flames. Local city volunteers have been caring for the affected, and along with the neighbors, came together to help clean up the damaged home. The fire destroyed many things in the house, and the scorched dust is everywhere. City volunteers do their best to clean up the place and move garbage down the floor. When we just arrived, everything here was in great ruins, as there were two piles of debris. The volunteers worked together to clear them out. We are a group of army because our neighbors are in trouble. We came to bring stability to the community, and it makes us proud. Siji is always on the front line, and they have all come to help on everywhere. Being one of the neighbors, how can I not come and help? Thanks to the help from everyone and the neighbors, we are able to help this family. The district and borough's heads are helpful too. We came here at 6 in the morning to prepare for the cleanup, and Brother Ruo also came sometime after 6.30. We were surprised and also appreciative of them giving help selflessly. We hope to work with their community volunteers. This is a kind of education. More people lead to more strength. City volunteers and the neighbors work together to help the family in need to rebuild their homes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. City volunteers continue to distribute rice seeds in Bago, Myanmar. Many farmers were inspired by the spirit of great love, so a total of 450 kilograms of rice were donated back to Siji to continue to help others who are in need. When coming to pick up these rice seeds, these farmers did not come empty-handed, as each one brought back the jars that they received during the mung bean seed distribution. Since then, he wanted to donate. I was very touched that he brought two of them, as most people only brought one. Many people came forward with rice contributions as well as bags, and in the morning, some 450 kilograms of rice was collected. 
Do you just want to make a one-time donation? No, he said that he wants to continue donating because there are many people who are in need. There are people who don't just donate rice but also donate money. This was money from his sister who is sick. From last time, his sister began saving 50 or 100 chart per day. These farmers think of doing good deeds each day, with volunteers even collecting all of the grains of the rice that have fallen to the ground to donate. This is the rice that I have grown and we're really reluctant to waste it. A Digi volunteer from Jordan witnessed this scene in this Buddhist country which has many grateful hearts. I saw a lot of farmers and the result of their donations yesterday after our distribution were 16 large bags of rice. Local Zhiji volunteers were grateful as many people came to help with some 40,000 rice seeds were smoothly distributed. Group A, Group B, and Bodhisattvas in Group C. When we encounter any problem, each group is willing to help us, and I feel deeply touched. Working together with love and giving back leads everyone to feel quite blessed. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, there's a CGK recipient, Ling Yok Sing, who had a high fever when she was seven years old, which caused her to suffer from mobility issues ever since. Due to being confined to a wheelchair, she has great difficulties getting around her home. Upon hearing the news, CG volunteers went and helped her build a barrier-free space. Ling Yok Sing, who lives in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, had a high fever when she was seven. This led her to suffer mobility issues later in life as she now relies on her mother to care for her. She could not move freely as I had to help her, but now I can no longer hold her because I have no strength in my legs. Since I have problems walking, how can I hold her? Ling Yok Sing is 27 years old this year. Her mother, who injured her thigh when she was cleaning the wheelchair a while ago, is not able to hold her anymore. The kitchen is too small, so I cannot enter it when I am in my wheelchair. That's why I have no chance to cook, and it is always my mother who cooks for us. Since my mom has mobility issues herself now, we have to buy takeout food most of the time. For example, she cannot take a shower by herself, so she can only do it outside of their home. Seeing her difficulties, we decided to help her renovate the bathroom and kitchen to give her more convenience. City volunteers accompanied Lin's mother to the hospital to clean her wounds. Later, after evaluation, volunteers found someone to help them build a barrier-free space. From the bathroom to the kitchen and to the front door gate, all the interior design has been tailored to their needs. He also helped me level the ground by the front door and lower the location of the lock. This way she can reach the lock, close the door and open it by herself. Besides, all of the lights in the bathroom are not high, so I feel relieved even when I'm not at home. To have a barrier-free space is a dream which Lim has been waiting on for 10 years. Now that her dream has come true, her mother can finally let go of worries. Lin Yosi has waited 10 years for this type of freedom. Her dream has finally come true thanks to Tsuji volunteers. Since she's able to move freely in her home now, she has entered into the kitchen and prepared a heartwarming meal to thank all the volunteers. <laughs> Since Lim Yok Sim can now enter the kitchen sitting in a wheelchair, she feels fresh and inspired as this is her first time cooking. I never thought about that. Now that I feel like I have become a good wife and loving mother. <laughs> Lim prepared vegetarian rum dum curry to thank the volunteers' kindness. She has shared her first experience cooking. Oh, 
I have never cooked before, so I still need my mother to guide me. But I believe that I have more opportunities to cook in the future, no matter it is dinner or lunch. When Lin was in high school, she was a Cixi New Shoes scholarship recipient. Her new barrier-free space is the result of Cixi volunteers visiting her for many years. Cixi volunteers are quite different. Even if we're not familiar with one another, they're just like my own family, who are not fussy about anything. Because the repair has been completed, we came to celebrate the occasion for this family to make them happy. Thanks to the volunteers for helping me and repairing my home. Now that I've become more self-reliant and I can do everything on my own in the future. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Lin and her mother rely on each other to leave. The arrival of volunteers has livened up the atmosphere of this family. Stay in Malaysia, Zhuhou Baru Cixi volunteers held a fair to promote environmental protection concepts to the public. Cixi volunteers brought boxes of supplies to this gathering. This visit is different from the usual ones. Very happy. I'm very happy to see so many people coming here. Elderly people need companionship. When I came here, many uncles were delighted. Upon seeing me, they said, thank you for coming here. I realized that our gesture of kindness makes them feel very warm. My grandmother and grandfather passed away. Every time I come here, I feel like I am seeing my grandfather and grandmother. I feel very happy. Even if they've never met me before, these grandfathers and grandmothers still care about me. From the videos played by the volunteers, these seniors have realized that there are many people in need in different parts of the world. Therefore, they are also willing to give of themselves. The Ciji Taman Ipia Emma's liaison office held a fair to celebrate the Lunar New Year with the public. One teacher seizes the occasion to share her experience of turning discarded clothing into daily supplies. The carpet is made with old clothing. The clothes I'm wearing now can be given to others. We usually throw them away if they are torn, but in fact, we can turn them into carpets. A member of the public realized small gestures in daily life can help protect the environment. Before I came here, actually, I really didn't have the environment awareness. Even though I see the news, newspapers like that. After I came here, uh, at first I feel wonder why they asked me to bring the Tupperware, the things on. Then once I came here, then only I realized. The participants have learned that even their small gestures in daily life can help protect the environment. In the U.S., the Cixi Al Monte Service Center hosts a weekly class for the community seniors. It's already been three years in the making, and the local elderly always look forward to the various interactive programs planned. For the Lantern Festival, all the seniors are like children again, making their very own lanterns. Thank you for watching. See you next time.